So we have seen a method of deciding a formula is valid or not. It's just simply write down the formula and uh, basically draw the truth table. We will see that uh, this is not a very desirable way of solving a validity question. Let us suppose for an infinite set, it can be finite or infinite both, uh, a formula f. Okay? And we want to show that sigma implies f. We cannot do that uh, basically truth table wise because uh, truth table needs to be have a finitely many variables. And sigma can potentially have infinitely many variables. There is a method which is called deriving, syntactically deriving that sigma implies f. Instead of trying going through semantic uh, way where you draw the all possible value variables and see if it really works. We will just look at the structure of the formula and see if that from there we can derive the sigma implies f. Even this method can even work for, for in, in, if sigma is infinite. We need to understand this notation. Sigma proves f. Okay, this is how it is read, and it is not this symbol. Okay, this means I did some syntactic observation, and from there I have concluded that this thing holds. Okay, it may be the case sigma implies f, and in your proof system you are not able to derive it. Okay, so that you, you didn't have enough observation that y implication can potentially hold, then you will fail. So when we can say the sigma proves f, here is a simple example. If on the left hand side f appears in, in the formula, then we can say f can be derived. So a proof rule provides us a means to derive new statements from the old statements. So what will happen is that I will give you proof rules. Here the proof rules look like this. Okay. What top says? what can already be derived what kind of statements i already have so you will have something proves something and something proves something if i some these facts are available to me how can i derive something new okay that will be a rule okay so this you will have a ruling you will have a premises you will have a conclusions and then the side condition that we must meet to apply the rule by sequence of applying these, these proof rules reduces derivations. What kind of rules we need? Okay. So first rule is very fairly simple, which we have seen before, that if sigma contains f, then you can simply say that sigma proves f. Let us suppose you have this kind of situation where you can prove have already proven sigma proves f, but then you know that there is a bigger set than sigma, sigma prime. So then that must also should be able to prove f. Basically, a uh, subset uh, can prove something, then I can prove also. So that should be fairly obvious why this must hold true. Yes. So these two rules are very simple observations on our sets and membership. Uh, doesn't seem so interesting. How can it help me prove something interesting about proposition logic? But it established the idea what are we going after. So we said there are proof rules, and the, from the proof rules we will do the derivations. What is this derivation? Okay, the derivation is a list of statements, okay, that are derived from the earlier statements. Okay, that is the notion of derivation. Okay, so let's see an example. Okay. Here you have this first thing, uh, which is written because of the proof rule applied assumptions. In the right side I will write this proof rule in green and the statement that was derived. Okay? The statement says since this thing is inside this set, I, from this set I can derive this guy. So there that's assumption. Now can I apply the monotonic rule on this thing and we obtain that we have a bigger set that can also apply the same formula. Okay? So here you say monotonic apply to 1. I must mention from where I am getting this statement. Okay? So monotonic needs a premise. Okay? So where is it coming from? Okay? It is coming from here. So you need to point at it. Okay? If you do not point at it, it is wrong, wrong derivation. Okay? And you will not get points in the exams if you do that. Okay? Let us try to write down 
proof rules for our logical connect. So one basic idea is that you have a you can prove this f, then you can apply and introduce a double ligation and still mean the same thing. Okay, so if a sigma can prove f, sigma should be able to prove double ligation f. And you can easily check with the truth table that holds true. Okay, so how are we going to use it? Uh, in this setting, I managed to prove R from this uh, this set. Okay. Now what I can do is can apply monotonic and make it a bigger set. Okay. That's allowed. That's nice. Now I can introduce double negation by applying the double neg. Okay. To two. You say double neg applied to the statement at two, and then I got this. Okay. Fair enough. Now, let's start studying what kind of rules we need for conjunction. Okay, so one simple rule is that if I can derive f, okay, from sigma, if I can from sigma prove j, I should be able to prove f and g. I mean, both can be proven from one uh, same set. If there are different set, let's say if uh, this guy is different from this guy, then that you can't apply this rule. Left hand side has to be the same. If I have a conjunction, then you should be able to eliminate one of them because you see that you know if both of them hold that one, uh, you can derive that exactly one of them holds. So that you know can should be able to say that. Okay, so that that's that's a natural idea of conjunction and symmetry of course okay so if f and g you know then you should be able to derive g and f the the following is a, is a derivation for example here you can derive this guy here that is an assumption uh, and elimination you want to apply here on this right hand side i can pick this guy and put it here okay now let's see what rule symmetry i want to apply symmetry here so what do i get this Q will go there and the P will get here. So let's see and get Q and P. So this is the way the proof system will work. You have proof rules, you have premises, assumptions, then you apply the rules and you get new and newer things. So we did conjunction, we did negation. Let's do disjunction. So what do the disjunction do? Uh, disjunction has, if you know something is implied by sigma, then you can also know that you can just simply introduce any kind of disjunction. This is allowed and you should be able to apply F or G because it just accepts more models than F. So that should be possible. Okay, so that's good enough. Symmetry, like conjunction, you should be able to do symmetry. And this is something which uh, pay attention to is that now it connects the conjunction and disjunction together. Okay, so this is essentially a De Morgan law. Uh, you have a disjunction here, then you can turn into a conjunction and negation here. So this, you have seen a truth table in the past, which where we proven De Morgan law. Now it is turned into a formal proof system. Okay, so you can see that if you want, if I ask you to oh, show me why my proof system is correct, you simply say, okay, refer to that truth table. Okay, that tells me that this is right thing to do. Okay, this rule can be applied in either direction. Okay, so the, the earlier rules were not bidirectional. Okay, so if you want to apply a rule bidirectional, you need to write two times. Okay, so you cannot just simply willy-nilly apply things in any direction. You just make sure that it is in a proof system, it's a written down in both directions. So we have given the same name, but this is understood, it can work in both directions. It, now a pattern is emerging. Okay, you have an intro. A rule for something, you have a symmetry rule for it, something, and you have an LM rule for something. That was we had for conjunction. Uh, let's go back. Conjunction did not have the def, right? So, some sense the, the proof system, the way it is operating is that the conjunction and negation are considered the base symbols, and these things are defined in terms of those uh, two symbols. So, I mean, it's up to your choice. You can pick any minimum set of symbols to be as a base symbol, okay? But uh, but whatever your choice you may be, the proof system will look different and you will see that there are actually other books and presentations use different proof systems. Okay, so now get back to LM. So, so this allows you to introduce this junction. This allows you to connect with the conjunction and disjunction. 
Now, this one allows you to remove disjunction. So, how do you remove disjunction? So, let's suppose you have this disjunction somewhere and I want to eliminate it. So, what kind of elimination is possible in the world of disjunctions? So, what do you do? You introduce F on this left hand side and then you prove H for some reason. You introduce G on the left hand side, you can prove the H, same H again. So, these guys are same. Okay. That means if I assume F, you get H. If you assume G, you get H. Therefore, if I know f or g, therefore I can conclude h. This is Weffer intuitive and this is the rule element. Okay. So let's prove something interesting here. Okay. So, so a lot of rules I have shown you. Now it's time to apply those rules. Okay. So let's suppose you have this thing where say f and g or f and h. Oh, this is talking about distributivity. So this is basically trying to show you one direction of uh, distributivity property. Okay. So let's see how do we prove that. Okay. So we assume that we have this thing derived in your derivation. It's coming from somewhere I know. I don't know. So this is usually written as a premise. Okay. This is different than assumption. Please note that assumption is uh, something is in a set, therefore I can conclude it can be proven. Okay. This is like somebody gave you. I don't know this set sigma, but somebody tell me just assume it and let's move on, see what you can derive. Okay. So I, I will do a small trick. I will just introduce sigma union f and g. Okay. If I do that, uh, I can say that f and g can be proven from the set. Okay. This may this step may seem weird, but let's 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 stick with it and we will see what happens okay then from elimination of n i get f symmetry of g uh, f and g i can get g and f please note that all the rules you've been applied refer to the right place where it's coming from so it, that that reference is important okay now now i can apply lm again i get g oh why spending so much out to get g out well, I can introduce disjunction here and I arbitrarily and I say G or H. Okay. Now, I have this from the set. I have this. Okay. So, I can introduce a sort of end intro and then I got this guy. Oh, wow. Look at this. This guy is same as this guy. So, I have proven it, but pay attention. I have proven on the right hand side, but left hand side something is off. Left hand side, there should have been this guy. But now I introduce this and I have proven this. Okay, sad affairs. How do I get rid of it? Remember that there's a disjunction LM. So maybe disjunction LM can help us because this guy is one of the guys of the disjunction. What if I can prove using this, the same guy again? and apply the disjunction element. Okay, so uh, the other guy was F and H, so let's introduce it and see if I can get the correct right hand side. I got F and H, I got F by and LM, symmetry, I got this, then what do you get? You got H by LM and I got F and H sitting here. Now in H I can arbitrarily introduce G anytime, right? But uh, that will be a problematic. It is not. In, it's not the right form. What's wrong with it? it? G is the wrong side. G has to be here to exactly match. So I need to apply symmetry. I got G or H. Now I have G or H, and the F there sitting there. What I can do is just simply introduce intro for conjunction, and I have this. So now. I have a both right hand side matching. Left hand side has this problem of this guy, but we can get rid of it using or LM. One important point to notice here is that uh, there is no prescription how to apply these proof rules. I have the proof rules and I want to prove this. Okay. But the problem is nobody is telling me in which order I should apply these rules. And that's where the prover and human comes in. Okay? So you are given this thing to prove and you don't know how do I proceed. Okay? That's also in mathematical problems you must have seen in all your life.